a scientific breakthrough that will shake the world. Saudi Arabia has just shocked American scientists with a discovery that is set to change how we think about energy production. From new technology to groundbreaking research, this video will uncover the latest developments in the world of science and how Saudi Arabia is leading the way. So, buckle up and get ready to be amazed as we reveal how Saudi Arabia shocked American scientists with their latest discovery. Before getting into it, here is a knowledge check. What is the Rub al Khali Desert in Saudi Arabia also known as? Share the answers in the comment section below. Here we begin. Saudi Arabia is surprisingly large, but because most of the country is a desert-like plateau, weather conditions are usually fairly stable. The main climate differences can be felt between coastal and interior areas. Summers in most of the country are hot and dry. Winters, on the other hand, are mild with temperatures dropping at night and rain to be expected. About Rub al Khali Desert Rub al Khali, also known as Al Rub al Khali, is a vast desert region in the southern Arabian Peninsula that comprises most of the Arabian Desert. It spans approximately 250,000 square miles in a structural basin primarily in southeastern Saudi Arabia, with minor portions in Yemen, Oman, and the United Arab Emirates. The Rub al Khali is the world's largest continuous sand area. It covers over one-fourth of Saudi Arabia's total land area and has a diverse topography. The Rub al Khali is one of the world's driest regions, is virtually uninhabited and unexplored. However, vast petroleum reserves lie beneath its sands. Al Ghar, the world's largest conventional oil field, was discovered in the desert's northeastern region in 1948. The Al Ghar field, which stretches roughly north south for about 160 miles, 260 kilometers, east of Riyadh, contains tens of billions of barrels of oil. Al Shaiba, located in the southeast near the United Arab Emirates and Oman, is another significant operation that includes refinery operations and large natural gas reserves. Earlier Phenomenons Planned Saudi Arabia's fortunes skyrocketed due to the discovery of oil. It now uses billions of dollars in oil profits to power many aspects of its economy and the lives of its citizens. One of these aspects is its food supply, which the kingdom imports more than 80% of with its oil money. In addition, only about 1.5% of Saudi Arabia's land area is arable and the country's agriculture consumes more than 80% of the kingdom's precious water supply. While the country is currently food secure, agriculture in Saudi Arabia has been a critical area of interest for those seeking to expand Saudi sustainability and mitigate potential risks in global food supply network crashes. Farming Policy Due to volatile food imports, Saudi Arabia attempted agricultural self-sufficiency with aggressive government subsidies for farmers in the 1980s. However, in 2007, these efforts were reimagined due to poor techniques and mismanagement of water resources. The kingdom now subsidizes livestock farmers' manufactured feed and promotes vegetable growth through greenhouses and drip irrigation methods. These methods save water while also ensuring a more sustainable food supply. As part of its Vision 2030 program, the Saudi government has made concerted efforts to improve its agricultural sector. The kingdom's top priority is to prove its use of limited natural resources while developing rural areas. Farming is a significant source of employment in the kingdom, so supporting agribusiness in Saudi Arabia improves not only food security, but also the lives of many people. In addition, farmers are frequently among the poorest people on the planet, so providing aid and focusing on agricultural efficiency simultaneously combats Saudi hunger and poverty. New Developments Following failed attempts in the 1980s, Saudi Arabians have used technology to help improve the efficiency of their agricultural industry. Satellite imagery of farmland is being used in new strategies, for example, the resulting thermal images help researchers understand the relationship between crop growth 
and water use. This allows farmers to compare water requirements for various crops and estimate which crop will yield the most given a certain amount of water. Another newer type of technology has recently entered the market in the United Arab Emirates, which shares a border and climate with Saudi Arabia. A Norwegian scientist introduced Emirati Desert Farms to her patented liquid nano clay, LNC. LNC is a treatment that coats sand with clay by combining clay nanoparticles with water and binding them to sand particles. Because sand particles are loose, they cannot efficiently trap water, but this treatment allows them to. In its trial run in Emirati Farms, LNC reduced water consumption by more than 50% without using any chemicals. While it is still quite expensive, international technology like this offers hope for farming in Saudi Arabia and other water-stressed regions that rely heavily on food imports. The current surprising phenomenon, the desalination project. The Ras Al Qair desalination plant of Saline Water Conversion Corporation SWCC is a hybrid desalination plant that uses both multi-stage flashing MSF, and reverse osmosis RO, technologies. The plant is located in Ras Al Qair Industrial City, 75 kilometers north of Jubail. The construction of the desalination plant began in early 2011 and was completed in April 2014. It's the world's largest desalination plant capable of serving approximately 3.5 billion people in Riyadh. The plant has a daily capacity of 228 million imperial gallons, MIGD, or 728 million liters. The project's construction cost 27 billion SAR, approximately $7.2 billion. Tucson and its consortium partner Saudi Akirodan were the primary contractors for the plant's construction, with Poirai serving as the project's consultant. The Engineering Procurement and Construction EPC, contract included equipment and facility production and installation, as well as testing and commissioning. In the second phase, a 2,650 megawatt combined cycle power plant will be built, consisting of five 600 megawatt combined cycle gas turbine CCGT, blocks and two 220 megawatt single cycle gas turbine SCGT units. In addition, the project's alumina refinery will consume up to 1,350 megawatts of electricity and 25,000 cubic meters of water per day. Project details. The desalination plant comprises eight MSF units and 17 RO units. The MSF units can produce 160 MIGD, while the RO units can produce 68 MIGD. Construction of a RO building, switchgear buildings, a wastewater treatment plant, a chemical dosing building, and the installation of a dissolved air flotation unit and two dual media filters were all part of the Ras Al Qair desalination plant project. In addition, ground improvement and backfill work were completed on the RO and MS plant sites. The project's offshore elements included installing three kilometers of GRP discharge pipes with end diffusers and constructing an intake channel consisting of a dredge channel and two 1.4 kilometer rock breakwaters, a seawater intake pump hose, and a discharge chamber of the two pipes. Hybrid treatment. The MSF desalination process involves heating seawater to generate steam and then condensing the steam to produce desalinated water. The process begins with the brine heater heating the seawater to a high temperature. Next, the heated seawater is transferred to an evaporator where the pressure is lower, allowing the water to boil quickly and flash into steam. The remaining water then goes through a process of additional stages each with a lower pressure than the previous one. Condensing the vapors from the heat exchanger tubings that run through each stage converts the flashing vapor into fresh water. The combined cycle power plant's waste heat will heat the tubes within the distiller unit's brine heaters. The RO process uses pressure to force seawater through a semi-permeable membrane to remove sodium and chloride. 
The process begins with pretreatment using any of these methods, including coagulation, flocculation, sedimentation, and filtration, as well as microfiltration, MF, and ultrafiltration, UF. The second stage entails supplying pressure via pumps to force water through the membrane. A pressure vessel and a membrane comprise the membrane assembly. The final stage, also known as the post-treatment stage, employs energy recovery devices such as turbochargers. It entails removing gases such as hydrogen sulfide from the water, measuring its acidity and alkalinity, and preparing it for distribution. What do you think of this amazing desalination project for Saudi Arabia's deserts? Comment below, and the answer to our question is an empty quarter. Subscribe for more.